For problems 22 and 23, the directions are the same. It says find all zeros of the function, use the zeros to factor the function, and then determine the end behavior of the function. So in order for me to find all the zeros, with no zeros given, I'm going to have to use what's called the possible rational zeros theorem, which means I'm going to take all the factors of the constant, which are 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4, over the, co the factors of the leading coefficient, which are just 1 and 2. So the list of numbers I get here are 1 over 1, which is 1, any sign variation, 1 over 2, which is 1 half, 12 over 1, which is 12, 12 over 2, which reduces to 6, 2 over 1, 2 over 2, which is 1, it's already there, 6 over 1 is already there, 6 over 2 reduces to 3, 3 over 1 is already here, and 3 over 2, then 4 over 1, and 4 over 2, which reduces to 2, and that's already on the list. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 different numerical values, but because of the sign variations, we actually have 16 possibilities, which is a lot shorter list than an infinite number of possibilities, right? But there's still quite a bit. Now what we can do is we can use the remainder theorem that tells us that the remainder is equal to the function evaluated at a certain value. Okay, so instead of doing the synthetic division for every single one of these to find out if they're going to give us a factor or not, we can just use the remainder theorem. So I know that if the zero creates an expression that does divide evenly into this, meaning that it will become a factor, only occurs if when I do the division, I get a zero. So if I divide by the expression x minus k, and I get a remainder zero, then that means that that value is a factor of the polynomial. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for these numbers here that will give me zero, okay? And I don't wanna sit here and do the um, synthetic division for every single one of them, right? It's gonna take us a really long time. What I can do is use the programming capabilities of my calculator and just figure out what is f of one, f of negative one, f of one half, f of negative one half, f of 12, f of negative 12. f of 6, f of negative 6, f of 2, and so on and so forth. And I only need to continue this pattern until I get one. I just need one that works, and then I can go from there. I'm going to write them all here, but I really only need one of them to work. This is a cubic so as soon as I find one that works, I can go ahead and do the synthetic division, and then that'll help me determine the other two. Because these are only the rational possibilities. I could still get numbers or um, factors that have irrational possibilities. And if that's the case, um, they'll have square roots in them, and you don't get any of those numbers from this. Or they could be complex factors, right, with imaginaries. And again, you're not gonna get that from this list. This list is only the nice rational numbers, either whole numbers or fractions, that's it. Those are the only kind of zeros um, that you'll get from this list. So let's go ahead and do the um, calculator function. So 2x to the third plus 3x squared minus 17x plus 12. Now I'm gonna ignore whatever my calculator tells me this first time because I apparently already have x saved as a specific value. And so what it has done is it's plugged in that value for x and found out that the result is 42, 
What I want to do is I want to start now plugging in these numbers. So I'm going to say 1 store x. And every calculator is different. You can figure out your storing cap uh, capabilities on your calculator. Or you can literally type in 2 parentheses 1 bit plus 3 parentheses 1 around it square it minus 17 parentheses with the 1 inside plus 12 and it'll give you the same exact thing and so I do get 0 so that is very nice because I don't have to keep going through all of these if this was not 0 I would have to try negative 1 and then 1 half and then negative 1 half until I get the first one that gives me a 0 but since I got lucky and the first one was a 0 we're going to go ahead and plug this in here. So 2, 3, negative 17, and 12. Bring down the first number, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, and add. And as expected, the remainder is the same as that value, right? According to the remainder theorem. But what it also tells me is that x minus 1 is a factor of the polynomial. The rest of the factors is 2x squared, positive 5x, and negative 12. Now, if you can factor this, fantastic. If you cannot factor it, there's always a way to find those solutions, and that's the quadratic formula. But I'm, this might be able to factor. 2 times negative 12 is negative 24. And I do have two factors that will subtract to give me 5. Um, those signs. So I can write 2x squared minus 3x plus 8x minus 12. And then factor by grouping. These have a 4 in common. So we end up with 2x minus 3 and x plus 4. So I have x minus 1 is one factor. And then 2x minus 3 is the other factor, and x plus 4 as the last factor. So the first problem wanted me to find all zeros of the function. Well, what happens when you set this function equal to 0? You get x equals to 1, you get x equals to 3, and then divide that by 2, and x equals to negative 4. So there are my three zeros, and then it wants me to use the zeros to factor the function. So the function will be written as x minus 1, 2x minus 3, and x plus 4. And then the last thing is to determine the end behavior. The end behavior can actually be, getting, be evaluated from the original formula. The term with the highest degree is this one. And the coefficient in front is a positive, And it's an x to the odd exponent. So what does the end behavior of an x to the odd exponent look like, right? Well, a positive x to the even looks kind of like a square, but we have no idea what's going to happen in the middle. A negative x to the even looks like a downward parabola on the edges, but again, we don't know what's happening in the middle. It could be a bunch of waves. It could be some weird little squiggles. We don't know. All we know is that it, on the ends, it behaves like a negative downward um, parabola. Um, a positive x to the i looks kind of like a quadratic function on the left and right. So on the left it goes this way, there's some stuff happening in the middle, and then on the right it goes that way. And a negative x to the odd does the reverse of this. So this part will go upward, something in the middle is happening, and then that part will go downward. So because I have a positive x to the odd, my situation is this situation. So then my in behavior should be looking like this. Okay. Now we need to do those same directions, but for um, the next problem. So for 23, we're going to do the same thing as we did before. Find the factors of 36. So 1 times 36. 2 times 18, 3 times 12, 4 times 9, 5 won't work, and 6 times 6, and I don't have to put 6 on the list twice. So, and then the factors of that are 1 and 2. So what are my possibilities here? We get plus or minus 1 
plus or minus one half plus or minus 36 plus or minus 18 plus or minus 2 and 18 over or 2 over 2 is 1 it's already there plus or minus 18 over 1 already there 18 over 2 is 9 3 over 1 is 3 3 over 2 is 3 halves 12 over 1 is 12 12 over 2 is 6 4 over 1 is 4 4 over 2 is 2 it's already there 9 over 1 is 9 that's already there 9 over 2 and then 6 over 1 is 6 and 6 over 2 is 3 and those are already on the list so again we're going to be plugging in these numbers into the original to see which ones will guarantee us a remainder of 0 before we start attempting to do the um, synthetic division of it so I'm going to do g of 1 first so now I've got a new um, function to program. Negative 2x to the fourth plus 7x to the third minus 14x squared plus 63x plus 36. Now one thing I need to mention here is that this time I can stop when I get one zero. Because this is an x to the fourth, I will have to shrink it down by two zeros in order to get a quadratic. Okay, so we're going to have to keep going at this list until we get to two results. So one stores x and let's go plug it in. We get 90. Now let's try g of negative one. we get negative 50. Let's try g of 1 half. Well, that is not 0. It is 259 over 4. g of negative 1 half. Ah, we get a 0. So we know we can use negative one half in the synthetic division. But when I'm finished, I'm going to have to do synthetic division again. So I need to find another number here. So let's keep going. First, let's double check that negative one half cannot be used twice. So actually, you can't check that until after you've done the synthetic division. So let's just keep going and hopefully another, another answer will work. If we cannot come up with another one, this one was probably used twice. So the next number on my list is 36. So 36 store x. Nope, that's not it. Let's try negative 36. Plug it in. Ooh, that's a big number too. Then let's try, so we're done with that, those. Let's try G of 18. So 18. Nope, that's not it. Um, G of negative 18. Nope, that's not it. Um, let's try two. Nope, that's not it. Let's try negative two. Nope, that's not it. Try nine. Nope, try negative nine. Nope. Let's try three now. Nope. Let's try negative three. Nope. Let's try three halves. Nope. 
No, let's try negative three halves. Nope, we're getting there, we're almost a little over halfway. Let's try 12. Nope, let's try negative 12. And we won't know which ones work, we just have to keep trying. If you have a calculator, a graphing calculator, you may be able to guess a little bit better, but I do not have a calculator, graphing calculator. Oh, I don't know why I'm saying that. I don't know whether it equals zero or not. I haven't tried it. Um, but I don't have a graphing calculator. Um, and some instructors don't allow you to use a graphing calculator. So I definitely want to try to do this without the graphing calculator. Okay, we're coming down to the last four chances. G of four and negative four, and then G nine halves and g of negative nine halves those are my last options if these don't work then my only guess is that that value is going to be used twice ah we do get one that works okay so we got originally that this one worked and now we're getting that four works so we know four is what's going to go here so let's set up the numbers, negative 2, 7, negative 14, 63, and 36. So bring down the first number, that's a negative 2. Negative 2 times a half is a positive 1. Add those, we get 8. The negative half of 8 is negative 4, which gives me negative 18. When I take a negative half of that, I get positive 9 which gives me 72. When I take half, a negative half of 72, I get negative 36. And there's that remainder of zero that we were supposed to get for negative one half. This also means that x equals negative one half, or that two x equals negative one, or that two x minus one was a factor equal to zero. So the factor for that guy is going to be two x minus 1. Now let's see what we get when we do 4. So bring down the negative 2, multiply those together, we get negative 8, which gives me 0. 4 times 0 is 0. When I combine those, I get negative 18. When I multiply those, I get negative 72, and again I get that remainder of 0 that we anticipated. But what am I left with? This would give me a factor of x minus 4. However, over here, what do I have left? So what I have here for my function is 2x minus 1, x minus 4, and this is a c, this is a x, and this is the x squared. So I have negative 2x squared minus 18. I can factor out that negative 2 that those have in common, which would leave me with x squared plus 9. And I cannot factor x squared plus 9 or can I, right? Can this be factored? It can. I do know the shortcut to factor it. But if you do not know the shortcut to factor it, use your quadratic formula. You have negative b, which is 0, plus or minus b squared, which is 0, minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So we end up with getting nothing plus or minus the square root of what is 8 times 18. Um, negative, negative, negative is negative 144 over negative 4. Well, we know that the square root of negative 1, a square root of a negative is imaginary, and the square root of 144 is 12, but I have, um, negative 4 at the bottom. So we have two answers here. We have x equals positive 12i over negative 4 and negative 12i over negative 4, which means I have um, a negative 3i and a positive 3i. And so if these guys are the zeros, right, the zeros, 
means x minus 3i is a factor for that one. And x minus a negative 3i will turn that into plus 3i. And so that's the factor. Okay. And now this is completely in its factored form. So I actually have already answered, I believe it was part B. This is the answer for part B. And I did find all the zeros. The zeros are um, negative 1 half, 4, and then down here, negative 3i and positive 3i. So that's the answer to part A. And then the final answer for part C was the, the end behavior. Again, that can be taken from the leading coefficient. So it's got a negative, but with an even exponent. So it should be going downward like a parabola, a downward parabola. So for part C, it should be this way, and this way should be my end behavior.